And so I want to just share some time with you. And uh, the key thought that I want in our minds is that unity begins with you. Unity begins with you. You know, I don't think no one will be surprised when I say that we are living in an increasingly divided and polarized world. In reality, the world has always been this way since the garden, when people divided themselves from God, from one another, and from the earth. The story of scripture is littered with this divi these divisions all over the place. And I suppose every age feels this way in that every age is one of hostility and division but it feels more noticeable these days. Like it is something, something almost in the air which you could no more escape than you could the breath in your lungs. It's this inescapable feeling that division is just the way things are. That every opinion is the occasion for a fight. And that everything we say is going to make someone mad. To be sure, this story does not surprise us as Christians, for this story of division has been the story that has haunted the people of God from the very beginning. From Adam and Eve, to Cain and Abel, to Jacob and Esau, from David and Absalom, to Peter and Paul. It is not a story which we evolve out of, or transcend through, or could ever forget about. But at some point in our lives, we go from thinking that division is not the way things should be and begin thinking that this is simply the way things inescapably are. We assume this is simply a natural state of things, that people should, at the very minimum, be wary of one another and that we have to just make do with that. It's why we buy insurance. It's why we build fences on property lines. It's why doors come with locks. It's why we write our names on our suitcases. In so many ways, we are always thinking defensively about what is ours and what is not ours. And this is simply the way things are. Now, brothers and sisters, this is not how things were meant to be. We were not meant to live with the vision as a, a natural state, as our natural state. Protecting ourselves from others was not really meant in the eyes of God. With disunity as just the way things are leaves us behind the reality of God. We were meant for more than, than just taking care of our little patch of the world and hoping for the best. We were meant for giving ourselves to others with all the joy and the risk that it entails. We were meant to be peacemakers for these are called the sons and the daughters of God. We are called to be those who extend the hospitality of God to others because God has shown great hospitality and true kindness to us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When we look at Psalms 118, eight through 12, here the writer says, it is better to trust in the Lord than to trust in people. It is better to trust in the Lord, to trust in great leaders. Many enemies surrounded me but with the Lord's power, I defeated them. They surrounded me again and again, but I defeated them with the Lord's power. They surrounded me like a swarm of bees, but they were quickly destroyed like a fast burning bush. I defeated them with the Lord's power. As we look at those verses, and I hope we get the point of this verse, there can be turmoil in our lives. But if we are trusting in God, God is the one part of our world that is always going to be there. And if we are in him, if we are in Christ, we win 
not by our power, but we win according to the Lord's power. When I look at this understanding that we live in a world that is divided, we know of church that are divided. So the real question is, is and will, all, will, is, will be accepting division become our norm? Are we going to accept this to be the norm? Or will we fulfill the you in unity? That's what I want you to think about tonight. The essential question, am I fulfilling the you in unity? Because without you, we can't be in the state of unity. Unity begins with you. I want that. In John chapter 17 and verses 13 to 15, it says, Jesus in his prayer he says, but now I am coming to you. And these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. Jesus proclaimed that in order for us to win, we have to be involved. We have to be in this process of unity. Unity with him, unity with God, and unity with one another. And that therefore begins with you. In Acts chapter 2, verse 42 through 47, it says, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And we are and all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day attended the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. And when I read these verses in Acts chapter 2, it's almost sometimes as if God is saying, this is what you can have. This is what life should be about. This is the reality of unity. And I, I would have to say, being that, you know, I spent spending two years in Turkey in a foreign land with my family, and actually finding God in Turkey with my family and actually living out Acts chapter 2, 42 through 47 in Turkey with my family. I understand why God showed this picture. Because when you are walking in all things common, and when you are celebrating together and going from house to house and with one another, spending our lives and giving of each other so generously, we truly get a real glimpse of the unity that heaven wants us to get. We get to see that it can be done. We get to, we get to live out the thought here on earth of a, a gracious and glorious picture of unity and of giving and of everything being beautiful in heaven. And so when I read these scriptures, Acts chapter two, verse 42 through 47, I think of us as a church, as a whole, because on that day, they had people from all nations, from all walks of life that came together and lived out the dream the hope and the thoughts that Jesus himself prayed about because they were willing to be the you in unity. And so I ask you tonight, even in 2020 with a year that has had so many issues, 
we always can return to the very basics of the Bible and live out the understanding that we are here for each other. And no matter what we need, no matter what we, one of us are lacking, if we as a church hold true to these scriptures, we will always take care of one another. And we always have the hope of that beautiful picture of unity that God showed in the beginning of the church. Unity begins with you. Will you take up the, the mantle and fulfill the you in that unity? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Belief comes by living out that faith. That belief pushes us to this thing called repentance. That repentance and that belief pushes us to confess the most amazing name ever given to man, and that is Christ, Jesus Christ. And then therefore it pushes us to a thought of being baptized into the body of Christ, the church. And then therefore it should also motivate us to be faithful unto death. Tonight, as we think about our responsibility as Christians, or if you're not a Christian yet, what God wants you to have and be a part of, God wants us to be unified in spirit, unified in the truth of his word, and unified in the love that radiates from him. Whatever your need be, let it be known as we sing the song of encouragement.